That's fascinating. By the way, uh, astrophysical disks, how, what are they? How broad is this definition? Okay, so astrophysical disks span a huge, uh, huge amount of ranges. Uh, they start maybe at the smallest scale. They start with actually Kuiper belt objects. Some Kuiper belt objects have rings. Okay? So that's maybe the smallest example of an astrophysical disk. We've got this little potato-shaped asteroid, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, sort of the size of LA or something. And around it is are some rings mm -hmm. of icy matter. That object is a small astrophysical disk. Then you have Saturn, mm -hmm. the rings of Saturn. You have the next set of scale. You have the solar system itself when it was forming, you have a disk. Then you have black hole disks, uh, you have galaxies. Disks are super common in the universe. And the reason is that stuff rotates. <laughs> Right, I mean, gravity that's, works. Yeah. So, uh, and th those rings could be the material that uh, composes those rings. Could be it could be gas, it could be solid, it could be anything. That's right. So, uh, the disk that made from which the planets emerged was predominantly hydrogen and helium gas. On the other hand, the rings of Saturn are made up of you know icicle, ice, little like ice cubes this big, about a centimeter across. That sounds refreshing. So uh, that's <laughs> incredible, hydrogen and helium gas. So in the beginning, it was just hydrogen and helium uh -huh. around the sun. How does that lead to the first formations of solid objects mm -hmm. in terms of simulation? Okay, here's the story. Um, so you like, have you ever been to the desert? <laughs> yes, I've okay. been to the Death Valley, and actually it was uh, terrifying, just a total tangent, I'm distracting you, no but I was uh, uh, driving through it, and I was really surprised because it was at first hot, and then as it was getting into the evening, there's this huge thunderstorm, like yeah. it was raining, and it got freezing cold, I was like, what the hell, is it was the apocalypse, yes. I had to like, just sit there, listening to Bruce oh. Springsteen, I remember, and just thinking, I'm probably going to die, and I was okay with it because Bruce Springsteen was on the radio. Look, when you've got the boss, you know, <laughs> you're, you're ready, you're ready to meet the boss. Yeah, so look, I mean. That's a good line. So anyway, sorry, the does, yes. It's um, true. Yeah, by the way, like to continue on this tangent, I, I absolutely love the Southwest for this reason. Just, uh, you know, I, during the pandemic, I drove from LA to New Mexico a bunch of times. The and, madness of weather. Yeah, the the chaos. the chaos of whether the fact that you know it will be blazing hot one minute and then it's just like we'll decide to have a little thunderstorm. Maybe we'll decide to go back momentarily to like a thousand degrees and then go back <laughs> to the thunderstorm. It's amazing. It's it's that by the way is chaos theory in action. Yeah. Right. Um, but let's get back to talking about the desert. Yeah. So in the desert, uh, tumbleweeds have a tendency to roll because the wind rolls them. And if you're careful, you'll, you'll occasionally see this family of tumbleweeds where like there's like a big one and then there's a bunch of little ones that that kind of hide in its wake, mm -hmm. right? And are all rolling together and still almost looks like, you know, a family of ducks crossing a street yeah. or something. Um, or for example, you know, if you watch Tour de France, right? You've got a whole bunch of cyclists and they're like cycling, you know, within... 10 centimeters of each other. They're not BFFs, right? Yeah. They're not yeah. <laughs> trying to be, <laughs> yeah. trying to ride together. Yeah. They are riding together to minimize the collective, um, you know, air resistance, if mm -hmm. you will, that uh, that they experience. Turns out solids in the protoplanetary disk do just this. Um, there's an instability wherein solid particles, right? Things that are a centimeter across, will start to hide behind one another and form these clouds. Why? Because cumulatively, that minimizes the solid component of the this aerodynamic interaction with the gas. Mm -hmm. Now, these clouds, because they're kind of a favorable energetic condition for the dust to live in, they grow, 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 until they become so massive that they collapse under their own weight. Mm -hmm. That's how the first building blocks of planets form. That's how the big asteroids got there. That's incredible. Yeah. So that is that simulatable or is yeah. it not useful to simulate? No, no, that's simulatable. Um, and people do these types of calculations. It's it's really cool. That's actually 
that's one of the many fields of planet formation theory that is really, really active right now. People are trying to understand all kinds of aspects of that process because, of course, I've explained it, you know, like as if there's one thing that happens. Turns out, it's a it's a beautifully rich uh, dynamic. But the but qualitatively, formation of the first building blocks actually follows the same sequence as formation of stars. Right, stars are just clouds of gas, hydrogen, helium gas that sit in space and slowly cool. And at some point they, you know, contract to a point where their gravity overtakes the thermal, you know, pressure support, if you will, and they collapse under their own weight and you get a little baby solar system.